<laughs> to many of us, it's one of the most nerve-wracking tasks we'll ever have to undertake. Let's be honest, there's nothing joyful about a job hunt. Yet, you keep pounding the pavement and plugging away because it's a numbers game. If you want to increase the odds of obtaining your dream job, one thing is certain. You must master the interview process. We'll jump into job interviews with both feet on today's episode of FYI. Welcome to For Your Info. English. You got it. You got it. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to this, another exciting episode of FYI for your English, and we are in the second season of the show. I can't believe it. Second season. That's good. You guys invited me back for a second season, and based on the feedback I've been receiving, you guys are really enjoying this season thus far. Thus far is una forma de decir hasta ahora. It's a good one to learn. All right, well, let's uh, let's get started right away. Vamos de cabeza. As I said, we're going to jump in with both feet, which is something I said in the intro. Nos vamos a tirar de cabeza. We're going to jump in with both feet, or you could say we're going to dive in, zambullirse, which means we're not going to hesitate. We're going to go right into it. So let's take a look at our intro. Many of you have caught me again with my my alliteration. Yeah, double, triple, quadruple alliteration. When will it end? Where will it end? Nobody knows. All right. Well, I said to many of us, it's one of the most nerve-wracking tasks. Now, this is a good word to know. Nerve-wracking. Now, something that is nerve-wracking makes you very, very nervous, obviously. Now, let's also look at the pronunciation of that. Nervous. He oído muchos alumnos decir nervos o una variación así. It's nervous. Nervous. So if something is nerve-wracking, which is an interesting one because you can write it with a W, a silent W, or without that W. I usually write it without it, but hey, just so you know if you see it out there, nerve-wracking. Something that causes a lot of stress or anxiety. Anxiety. Vamos a pronunciar esa. Ansiedad is anxiety. So something that's nerve-wracking is estresante. And I think everybody will agree, nobody likes to go on job interviews. And if you do, wow, <laughs> you are very unique. Uh, most of the people I've worked with throughout the years are not big fans of this whole process. And uh, well, I understand it. As somebody who has gone on many job interviews in my day, well, uh, I can give you a, a little bit of experience from all different fields. Remember, fields are campos o oficios. Another way to say oficio as well is craft. A craft is un oficio, if you learn a craft. All right, well, let's take a look then. Nerve-wracking tasks. So we all agree, it's nerve-wracking. And it's something that, well, unless you work for yourself, it's something that we will all have to undertake. Have you heard this word before? To undertake. Uh, this is emprender, comenzar, um, empezar, right? To commit to doing something. And it's interesting because when we have a verb like this, if you notice, the word undertake has the word take in it. So if we look at it, how would we conjugate it? Let's see if you guys can figure it out. Every day I undertake a lot of different things. Yesterday I undertook, you got it, and lately I've undertaken. So basically, it conjugates the same way as the verb take. Then I said, let's be honest. There's another one that uh, my students often mispronounce. It's not honest, it's honest. Ah, uh, Think about when you go to the doctor or the dentist and they say, open your mouth, say ah. Uh. Well, that's the sound, honest. Let's be honest. There's nothing joyful. Now, I know many of you who listen to this podcast know the word joyful from our Christmas episode. Remember? 
Joy to the world. Well, joyful is happy, contento. So there's nothing joyful about a job hunt. And I think we all agree. Now, if you disagree, please let me know. I want to know what you love so much about looking for a job. Another way we, we say it is, as I just said, a job hunt. But uh, it doesn't matter if you like it or not. It's part of life. Unless you are an entrepreneur and you work for yourself, well, you need to go on job interviews. So I said, yet you keep pounding the pavement. Now, to pound the pavement is exactly what it sounds like. Patear por ahí, moverte. To pound the pavement. Es moverse, right? Uh, we talk about that a lot when we talk about looking for a job in New York or landing a job. So, Looking for a job is buscar, and to land a job or to find a job is encontrarlo. We're going to look at all that vocabulary a little bit later on. So write that one down. It's a good expression to pound the pavement and to plug away. There's that alliteration again, plug away. And to plug away is to keep working hard, right? We were plugging away all morning. Esforzarse, trabajar would be the word in Spanish. So to pound the pavement and plug away. There's that alliteration. Because it's a numbers game. Have you heard this before? This is an expression we use in English to say that it's all about probability. La probabilidad. It's a numbers game. Let me explain it for you. It's pretty simple. Let's say the more job interviews you go on, well, the higher the possibility of you landing a job, right? Well, that's the idea behind it's a numbers game. I used to uh, apply that same philosophy when I was trying to pick up girls, ligarme chicas. I said, well, if I talk to 20 girls, maybe one will want to go home with me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> those were the good old days. <laughs> Esos días, uh, the good old days, we say, en aquel entonces. But uh, it's true. In life, it's a numbers game. If you want to increase your chances, then what you have to do, as I said, if you want to increase your chances or your odds is another word I gave you uh, in the intro. Odds, O-D-D-S. And that means la probabilidad. The expression, what are the odds? ¿Qué era la probabilidad que iba a pasar eso? O-D-D-S. So, of course, if you want to increase your odds of doing anything, well, the more you do, the more chance you'll have of being successful, right? That's what they say. That's the age-old rule. So, if you want to increase the odds of obtaining or getting your dream job, I used obtaining because I wanted it to work with odds. But you can say getting, obtaining, or as we said before, landing your dream job. Then I said, one thing is certain. Now, careful with the pronunciation here. No es certain. It's certain. Certain. Or you can say certain. Uh, los americanos nos comemos la T. We have that glottal thing there. That's certain. Certain. You must master the interview process. And that's something I tell people all the time. You don't, you know, you, you can learn jobs. You can, you know, get better. You can learn the ropes. You know, aprender uh, por donde van uh, los tiros. But uh, you, you've got to be, there, there's no way around it. If you want to get in the door, or as we say, if you want to get your foot in the door, si quieres meterte en la puerta, well, you've got to be good at interviewing. There's no way around it. No hay forma de evitado. We need to master it. And master, that's a great word that you're all familiar with. We master something. Well, what happens when we master something? Lo dominamos. So you get a master's degree. Aha! That makes sense. Uh, and then I said, we'll jump into job interviews with both feet, the expression we looked at before, uh, tirarnos de cabeza, on today's episode of FYI. So, why? I want to know why. Why is the job interview or the job hunt such a nerve-wracking process? Why is it that some people compare this process with going to the dentist or having teeth pulled, no, que te saquen los dientes, or maybe a root canal? Do you know this word? Yeah, it's a word in, in English we usually say uh, when something is unpleasant, we compare it to a root canal. Una endodoncia. <laughs> hey, well, I, I, if you ask me, I'd really have to think about it. Do you want to go on a job interview right now? Or would you prefer a root canal? And then my next question would be, well, how much laughing gas is the doctor going to give me? <laughs> 
because if it's if he's gonna you know give me good painkillers, that's a, a very logical word in English, a painkiller, mata dolores, uh, analgesico, then I think I'll go with the root canal. No, no, I'm just joking. But seriously, what, what, why? Why are we so nervous? Why, you know, and I, I'm, I'm asking myself the same way I'm asking you. And, and I thought about this long and hard. To think about something long and hard is pensarlo muchísimo. And I think it's because we're being judged. Nos están juzgando. We're being judged. And the chances are that they might reject us. And nobody likes rejection, right? Do you like to be rejected or turned down, right? To, to turn somebody down is otra forma de decir rechazar. No, nobody does. Nobody likes being judged and then nobody likes being rejected after they've been judged. So I understand why. Even if you're the best employee for the job, you're a perfect fit. You have to convince them in an interview. And you might be the greatest engineer in the world, but if you don't know how to interview, well you're not going to get a good job or a good position. So that's how important this interview process is. And today we're going to look at all different things from common questions to what an interview is and what the purpose is. In fact, let's start there with the purpose. There's another word that people often mispronounce. No, it's purpose or purpose, right? It's purpose, purpose. Well, according to LinkedIn, this is an interesting one too. My students always say LinkedIn. But no, in English, it's linked in. And to link somebody, to connect somebody, no, es, es hacer una introducción, right? It makes sense. You're linking people. Estás juntando gente. And uh, so LinkedIn, not LinkedIn, please, please. It, my ears bleed when I hear LinkedIn. So what is the purpose of a job interview? Well, according to, según, according to LinkedIn, Number one was to clarify real job needs. O sea, clarificar las necesidades del puesto o del trabajo. I think that's good. So that everybody is on the same page and they know what the requirements, los requisitos are, for this job. So later, if you get hired, they say, well, we told you we were looking for somebody who uh, mastered uh, Excel or whatever. Uh, in fact, we call uh, Excel because Excel is obviously a registered trademark, we call these spreadsheets, spreadsheets in English. Um, so to clarify real job needs, makes sense. Okay, let's look at number two, to demonstrate to the candidate that the assessment is professional. So they have to show them too, because remember, that's something I always try to remember on a job interview. I'm not the only one being interviewed here. I'm interviewing them. I'm seeing if this job is right for me or if this position is right for me. Si es adecuado para mí. So I always feel that too. It takes some of the stress off when you're thinking, well, I've got some questions too, and I don't know if I want this job yet. It gives you a little more confidence, right? And uh, that word we looked at, candidate. Candidate is somebody who is applying for a job. We can call them a candidate, uh, excuse me, a candidate or an applicant because an applicant, you guessed it, applies for a job. So, and the word assessment, they right, that the assessment is professional, is evaluación. I think we looked at that in a previous episode. The verb is to assess or evaluate, and the noun is an assessment or an evaluation. And third, thirdly, se puede decir, terceramente, <laughs> that the company has extremely high hiring standards so that the company doesn't just hire anybody who comes in off the street, but they have standards too. So I think that's pretty clear. It's a pretty clear purpose. So when did it start? When did we start doing job interviews or calling them job interviews? Well, I think we've got to go way back. <laughs> Here we are back in 1921, 1921, and this is the year that the job interview was officially born. Really? You mean we haven't been interviewing people uh, since uh, before 1921? I mean, what were we doing back then? Well, we're getting to it. Ahí vamos. Let's start with why 1921 is such an influential year and considered the year the job interview was born. And that's because a guy, you might 
recognize his name. It might ring a bell, quizá o suena. Uh, Thomas Alva Edison? Oh, yeah, that guy. The phonograph, the light bulb? Yeah, Edison. Ooh, we've got to do an episode on Thomas Edison. Quite an interesting character. Well, did you know, aside from inventing all those other things I just mentioned, he also was the inventor of the job interview? Well, uh, well, what he did was he created a written test. No como una prueba escrita. Written. Cuidado, muchos alumnos he oído decir written. It's written, right? So he created a written test to evaluate these candidates and their knowledge. And yeah, he, he had the idea to say, well, you know, I don't just want to hire anybody. I, I want to, you know, hire the right people. I want to hire smart people. I want to hire people that, you know, uh, have something in common with me that are willing to learn, dispuestos a, a aprender. So he came up with uh, a test, a written test, and they started to evaluate all the different workers. So you're telling me that they didn't do that before? Well, let, let's go back. Let's go back a little bit further then. Humans, uh, before uh, we got jobs and we started farming and doing all that stuff, we were hunter-gatherers. Okay, to hunt es cazar and to gather es juntar cosas. And well, when we were in this stage, when humans were in this stage, you didn't really, you know, go to a job interview. Do you know why? Because you did the job your dad did and your grandfather before him, and your great-grandfather before him. You were born into your job. In fact, that's why many people in Spain, their last name is Zapatero, for example. I'm sure their great-great-great-great-grandfather was a, uh, you know, a shoemaker. Who knows? Who knows? Um, so you were born into your job. So that's why people didn't go on job interviews. You know, uh, if your father was a blacksmith, un herrero, well, that's, you would be the next blacksmith in the family. And he would pass on these traditions to, he or she would pass on these traditions to their children and they would take over the family business. So that's all great. But then there were never any job openings, right? No había... Uh, huecos, I think you say in Spanish. There were never any job openings if you just pass the job down to your son. Well, occasionally a job opening would come up. And when would that be? Well, think about it. What happened if that blacksmith or that locksmith, cerrajero, uh, didn't have a son or a daughter to teach them that trade, oficio, the word we looked at before? What if there was no heir no, no digo heir como aire, aunque suena exactamente igual. I mean heir heredero. You know, somebody who comes after you. Somebody who inherits your money, your home, and in this case, your trade, your profession. And so uh, what happened when they didn't have kids? Because not everybody um, had kids, right? Or, or let's say you had a kid, but the kid was a complete knucklehead. <laughs> a knucklehead is un tonto. A knuckle is nudillo. Pero si eres una cabeza nudillos, eres un tonto. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm sorry. Some kids are knuckleheads. That's the way it works. Well, then uh, they didn't want that family business to die down. Um, because for them, it was more than a business. It was a trade. It was their livelihood. This is a very good word to look at. Lively, livelihood. A ver lo que, como se dice en español. Check it out. Sustento. Wow. I didn't know that one. See, guys, as I always say, you're not the only ones learning every week on this podcast. Um, so, yeah, they, uh, they had apprenticeships then in this case. If there was a position, if this blacksmith, for example, didn't have a child, well, no problem. They decided, well, we'll find somebody who is willing and dispuesto and able. Capaz, decimos muchas veces, willing and able. And, uh, well, what they did is they would take them on and they would give them an apprenticeship. So if you're an apprentice, uh, you're learning. Aprendiza. Aprendiz, I think you say. Aprendiz. And an apprenticeship is what they study. But there was just one problem over here with these apprenticeships. They are what we would call to these days slavery, servitude, indentured servants. Because many of these apprentices wouldn't get any money. They would just learn the craft and that's about it. Maybe a little bit of food or something like that. So it was, it still wasn't where it needed to be. So what happened? 
What took us from here where we are with apprenticeships and passing down jobs from generation to generation? Well, what took us into this place where we needed to find other people outside of our family to fill these positions, these job openings, these vacancies? Well, enter the Industrial Revolution. That's right. It was the Industrial Revolution, and this is when they started opening up factories all over uh, the United States, also in London as well, and all over England, well, many countries. The Industrial Revolution hit in many countries, some countries harder than others. So factories were popping up all over the, uni the United States. Uh, factory es fabrica. Uh, I think you can figure that out because I know some people say es una factoría. Right? I, th I think I've heard that. Maybe it's Latin American Spanish. But it's one of those words that's pretty easy to figure out. So yeah, factories were popping up all over the United States. And what did they need? They needed people to work in these factories. And uh, of course, unless you have a 155 brothers, then you're going to have to look elsewhere. Mirar hacia otro lado para ayuda. So then job openings were everywhere. I mean, all you had to do was show up, presentarte, and you could get a job. You know, uh, in fact, they would pick people. If you've seen this in movies, you would show up at the factory door or at the back door of the factory and the foreman, el capataz, or, you know, whoever was in charge would say, okay, you, you, and you, come on, you're working today. Day laborers, como decimos, labradores de día. And uh, yeah, that was okay, but that wasn't okay for Edison. No. Edison said, I don't want to just choose anybody, anybody who just shows up at our door here. I mean, there are some knuckleheads out there. <laughs> there are a lot of knuckleheads out there. So I think we should, you know, put people to the test here. And of course, you can imagine Thomas Edison and him and his factories and these other factories. I mean, they were seeing hundreds and hundreds of people a day looking for work. And so they could be a little bit more selective, especially when they filled all these positions. And so um, what happened was Edison, he said, you know what, I'm a genius, you know, and, and he knew, he knew he was a genius, you know, he, he might, I don't know if he was modest or not, but, uh, or humble, humilde, but let's be honest, the guy was a genius and he was frustrated. He was frustrated that a lot of the college students, the students who were graduating from college, remember, uh, colleges, universidad, well, uh, they were always looking for a job, but these guys lacked knowledge, carecían de sabiduría. They, he, he just felt like they weren't sharp, agudos, and, you know, he was like, really, these guys are, I don't know if these guys are going to do a good job or not. So he created a test to filter out those guys, those guys that he thought maybe, you know, let's not waste our time here. You know, so he created this test and it was a, a test for prospective employees. Remember, employee is the worker and employer is the person who pays you, the person who signs your paycheck, tu nomina. And this was a, a, a series of questions. It was a form, un formulario, with a series of questions, but it wasn't just questions related to that job in question. It was questions that were based on general knowledge. Some of the, the, the questions had to do with the, the position that they were applying for or the company or, you know, things related to that field. But then there were other questions that had to do with geography and literature. What he wanted to see was that he wasn't just hiring two strong hands, but that the person could think too. Guess what? It caught on. It caught on, and the rest is history. And now you wouldn't think of starting a job without a job interview. Or <laughs> some jobs, I know they do like six or seven interviews, uh, depending, on, of course, on the position. Usually for lower positions on the totem pole, el totem, they usually one, two interviews, things like that. You know, there's no right or wrong way, but the way it usually works is the higher the position, the more interviews you have to go on. And uh, as we said before, the interviewer is the person who asks the questions and the interviewee is the person who answers the questions. And we're going to talk about that later too because you shouldn't just be answering questions in a job interview. You should be asking 
questions as well. If I had to think about how many job interviews I've been on, I would say it's in the hundreds. But guys, remember, uh, I studied acting, interpretación. So when you're an actor, you do a lot of odd jobs, trabajos cualquiera. So I worked in sales, uh, I worked in restaurants, I worked uh, outdoors, in la calle. I mean, I did a little bit of everything. Y como dijimos antes, they're called odd jobs, que es una, una palabra que vimos antes. Uh, the word odds como probabilidad. Well, I'll tell you what, it has a third meaning too. Odd is also impares. So odd numbers are one, three, five, seven. Oh, and it's got a fourth meaning. Odd también es raro. Are you serious, Alberto? This word has four meanings? But how am I going to know which one they're talking about? Pay attention. As I tell my students, context is everything. If you're paying attention, you'll know what the word is, even if you don't know the word because of the context. So always pay attention, not just in job interviews, <laughs> but in all kinds of conversations. So it was, as we said before, there's no right or wrong way to do an interview. Um, there's no, you know, written rule that says three interviews and you get the job or the, inter the interview has to be very structured or, or as we know too, a lot of companies now are doing more unstructured, uh, more conversational interviews. And you know what? You're going to see a little bit of everything out there. And that's why it's really important to be prepared for any kind of interview and interviewer. Because uh, at least from my experience, I have come across some interesting people along my way. I'm going to give you some tips, unos consejos, in the second part, the bonus part of the show, which is exclusively for patrons. And if you guys are interested in receiving bonus audio every week, along with PDFs with the vocabulary, you'll also be able to join me every week to review these episodes in a weekly class. We have monthly master classes, contests, and so many reasons to be a part of our curious online community over at Patreon. If you guys want more information, you can check it out at patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso, and you can find out about all the different levels. And this way you can join our community and get access Access to all this bonus content that comes out every week. In fact, on social media, a lot of times people say, hey, Alberto, I would love to get the vocabulary, you know, because in these podcasts, in, in a typical week, we'll look at over 300 words and idioms, guys. So there's a lot of stuff to get down. So that's why I've created these materials as an aid, una ayuda, to go along with the podcast. If you want more information about the bonus audio, the PDFs, the classes with me, and much, much more, find out on patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso. Take a look, and of course, let me know if you have any questions. And speaking of patrons, I think it's a perfect time to give a shout out to all my patrons. Now, I can't mention all of you, but I will mention some of you. My super duper students, Roberto, Jose Maria, Mila, Desiree, Alex, Patricio, Edgar, and Lolis. And don't forget about my interstellar students, Diego, Carmen, Pilar, and Diana. Thank you so much, guys. This show would not be possible without you. So if you guys enjoy this show and you're not patrons, say thanks to my patrons. They are the producers. And I've got to say, patrons, keep up the good work. I've seen all of you making progress every week in our classes. More information available at patreon.com slash Alberto Alonso. All right, so we've been talking about interviews and, you know, what it takes to do an interview and where it came from, the history and all that. But uh, how do you get an interview? Because you got to get the interview first. I always tell people, you don't get the job first. You get the interview step by step. Firstly, it depends. Maybe there's a recruiter or a, a headhunter, as we call them. Or maybe you just see a job offer in a local paper. And what do you do? Well, you've got to apply for that job. As we said, you see that there's an opening or a vacancy, and you apply for that job. How do you apply for a job? 
You have to send your resume. The British say your CV, but Americans say resume, tu curriculum. Uh, you also have to put in a cover letter that you've got to include, right? A cover letter, I think you say carta de presentación. So remember, you don't just wake up one morning and say, I got an interview tomorrow. You got to get the interview first. So you got you to gotta keep your eyes peeled, como decimos. Estar muy pendiente if you're looking for a job. And there are other ways to do it too, as many of you know, there are job fairs that happen sometimes. Different companies come to recruit people. Uh, recruit is evidentemente reclutar. Also, networking. Networking is, bueno, conociendo gente, moviéndote, hablando. You know, these are all things that you can do to get your foot in the door. Once you send out your resume and your cover letter and make sure you don't have any typos, erratas, and make sure everything looks good in English. I have to tell you, I have seen some really big screw-ups uh, on uh, resumes. So make sure, guys, you know, it's worth it to have somebody take a look at it, even if you have to pay. Because remember, this is your business card, tu tarjeta de visita, before you have a job, right? Your resume, once they call you, that's, that's what you're hoping for now. You're hoping they call you, and then the next thing is they set up an interview with you. Concretan una entrevista. And then, well, you're almost there. Then you only have four or five more interviews to go, and uh, wow. Oh, man, it sounds overwhelming. And as I said before, it is overwhelming. I don't know anybody who loves looking for a job. I know people who love the hunt, no, la caza, but the job hunt specifically, because if you're looking for a job, it means A, you're not happy in your current job, B, you're currently unemployed in el paro, so you're usually in a desperate situation or a difficult situation when you're looking for a job. I know what you're going through. I've been on many job interviews, and that's why in the bonus part of today's show, we're going to take a look at some tips. I'm going to give you some of my favorite tips, things that have helped me. Uh, we're also going to take a look at some of the most common interview questions so you can be prepared for them. That and, of course, we're going to laugh and learn so much more in the bonus part of today's FYI. 